for so long. This is gonna be great. Um, if you are a club owner or a manager, this is a good one for staff. Um, this will be preschool um, conditioning, I think is what the title is. Um, so I'm going to start. We're going to get going. I'm going to move this over, go to present mode. And if you have questions, feel free to start introducing yourselves. This will be interactive a little bit. Um, feel free to add your comments. And I won't be able to see the comments because I'm sharing the screen right now. Um, but if you have a question, feel free to pop that in because I will be able to see questions. Um, so, oh, I can see, the, oh, I can see the chat. Ha <laughs> ha, win. This is only now my second time doing a webinar because I did one on Tuesday. Um, so hopefully so far it's been going okay for everyone. Um, this has been a free thing. People have volunteered. Um, oh, closure extended to May 30th. I'm sorry, Kristen. I fear that California is headed that way. Um, the governor got on today and I think he, what, he closed the beaches in Orange County only, I think is what he did but I have a feeling more restrictions are coming um, because we'll see. Um, oh, he closed the entire state for the beaches. Sorry, I, I was listening. So I was listening to that and I was listening to Mimi's. And so I was like going back and forth, all California beaches. I didn't know that. So that means our beach, our closest beach here in, um, Oh, you work for Mimi. Yeah, so I was trying to watch Mimi's and try to keep up to date with what Governor Newsom was saying because um, he always has such helpful things for us. Anyways, we won't go into that here. Um, <laughs> um, okay, so um, we're going to be going into preschool conditioning today. So we're going to go over some different drills you can do, what you do, all those kinds of things. Um, for those of you that weren't here on Tuesday, my name is Annie Bradshaw. I am the manager at V-Force Elite Gymnastics in Madera, California, which is smack dab pretty much in the middle of the state. Um, we are, we have a very strong competition program. Um, and so I've worked at many different gyms. I've worked in Massachusetts and Idaho. I've worked in the Bay Area, and now I'm in um, the Central Valley. Um, so, and if you're just hopping on, please feel free to email or text out the webinar link to um, other coaches you may know. This will be a great one with lots of ideas of stations and things that you can apply to your program. Um, hopefully it'll be beneficial for everyone. Um, so I am the Excel director and I do the preschool and rec lesson plans at V-Force. Um, I've been doing this my whole life. <laughs> you know how it is, grow up in the gym, coach at the gym, coach at more gyms, how it goes. Some of you stay at the same gym forever, which is cool, but I, I have moved around. Um, I'm originally from Massachusetts, hence the, the Red Sox gear, and that's my one daughter. She is now three and a half years old. So anyways, so preschool conditioning, having fun while building a strong foundation. So preschool gymnastics, obviously, it needs to be fun, exciting. The kids need to have fun, and so, um, but we also want to have them progressing. And so part of preschool conditioning is creating the right stations so that the kids can have fun while also learning those basic gymnastics skills. So let's talk for a minute. And this will be kind of be a participation part. I want you to kind of brainstorm with me what some of the challenges are in preschool conditioning. So think about your own preschool classes. Think about um, what some issues may be. Um, and challenges that come with the topic of preschool conditioning. And I know there's a little bit of a lag with Zoom. Um, but I'll wait for 
for a second so that you guys can all answer. Um, kids not focusing, yeah. Preschool conditioning, if you think about conditioning in general, um, like if you think about team conditioning, it's not necessarily the most exciting thing in the world. Um, various milestone and development, yeah, definitely. So some kids are farther along than others. Short attention span, mixed level classes, kids at different levels, yep. Kids running around, yep. <laughs> Kids not understanding how to do the exercise. Space, yes. Oh, parents, yes. Turn taking, yes. Fun, yes. Parents, yes. Kids not having great body awareness, yes. Is it worth it? Are they actually gaining strength over time? Yeah, yeah. Why even work it in? Because they're only there for what, 45 minutes a week? Are they actually gonna build any strength for that? Strength versus body sizes, yeah. Um, I don't know about you guys, but my preschool body type has changed in my general classes from 10 years ago. Um, a lot more kids are spending more time watching screens than they used to, which is um, just the way life is. I get it. Trust me, I have a three-year-old. <laughs> um, kids getting bored easily or giving up when something is too challenging. Physical abilities. Um, kids getting upset when they can't do it. Yes. Yes. These are all you guys rock stars. Um, one that I would add to it, kind of a fear, I think with a lot of people that they don't necessarily, um, want to address is that sometimes they're scared to do preschool conditioning in that parents might accuse them of some sort of abuse of their child. Um, so pushing them to condition will maybe be, be viewed as um, pushing their child to do something they don't want to do. You know what I mean? Um, so we, we have to be careful in the way that we do preschool conditioning in a way that it is fun and it is not abuse and not forcing a kid to do something that um, is too hard for them or, 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 you know, you have to know your boundaries. Um, and so we're going to kind of talk about some of those things and then we'll talk about stations and things we can do to kind of combat that, um, facing fears. They just shut down. Yes, 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 yes. And if you have questions or anything along the way, we'll kind of go through those too. Um, so the first thing is that as a preschool coach, you obviously need to know that you need to be adaptable. Um, so no nap, that's the worst. Um, okay. So you need to know how much time you have. So for example, if you have a 10 minute circuit, um, maybe only one of those stations is your conditioning station, or you have a 10 minute circuit and the circuit is not working, then you want to make sure that you have a conditioning activity that can take five minutes that is beneficial for the student and also um, you're able to work through and, and have control of the class. Um, two, obviously space. Preschoolers don't necessarily get the most amount of space in the gym because they are little bodies, um, but how to use the space in a way that you can create stations that are beneficial for the student and building their muscles and building their gymnastics abilities. And then three, which a lot of you brought up, um, are the student's abilities. So sometimes you have the brand new three-year-old who just graduated out of parent taught class, or you have the brand new three-year-old who's never even been in a gym before. And then you have the almost four-year-old who um, has grown up in your program and has an older sister on team and you know, you know you have the varying abilities in preschool because most preschools are divided by age as opposed to ability level and um, that's just the way preschools run and that's fine um, we're going to kind of talk about how to address and how to um, work to different students abilities with the same sets of stations um, Okay, onwards. Okay, so first we're gonna talk a little bit about parent taught. So this is the only slide that I'm gonna be doing talking about parent taught. Most of this is gonna be centered on preschool itself, preschool age, but um, we cannot forget parent taught. It's my favorite. Um, so we're gonna go through just a couple of the stations of things you can do for that. So magic carpet rides, if you're unfamiliar with those, are 
wonderful. Um, they're so fun for the kids and they're fun for the parents. So the kid sits on a towel or a carpet or a parachute or whatever you have available. And the parent grabs the carpet or the towel or the parachute and they pull the tot slowly um, around the gym or whatever space you have. So obviously this is one that you, if you have more space or a long narrow strip, magic carpet rides are wonderful. Um, it engages the kid's core. And one of the things that I wanna emphasize again here is that with preschool conditioning, we want to be able to be able to explain what these stations have to do and what muscles they're working and how it's working towards the child's development. So magic carburides work core majorly. They work balance, vestibular senses um, in the child's um, development. Um, next, we're gonna talk about for parent taught, we're looking at building their grip strength. So anything where they're holding onto something, one of my favorites is, you know, those lummy sticks or like here, I'll just hold a pen for example. Kid holds the pen, parent holds the middle, kid's sitting in like a pike or something, and the parent pulls the kid up. So then the kid is working on that grip strength, which will build to bars, right? Because sometimes when kids go to grab the bar, they go whoop, whoop, every time. And so we want to build that grip strength so that they're able to eventually hold up, hold on their own body weight. Um, and this is a great developmental tool for them. So you can do that with lummy sticks, you can do it with hula hoops. Um, one of my favorite games with the hula hoop is you have the parent standing inside of the hula hoop holding on and the kid is holding on to the hula hoop on the other side and the parent moves slowly around the floor and the kid's holding onto the hula hoop following them around and then you can have the parent and child switch. Um, and again, working that grip strength that develops to bar skills. Um, another thing that we're focusing on parent and taught for their coordination and strength is their jumping skills. So while parents might not view it as conditioning, we know that it's building those, because obviously in gymnastics, how many times are kids jumping like on every single event, you know? Um, even bars, mounts. Um, <laughs> So um, we're building those jumping skills. Obviously, in parent taught, when they very first get to the class, they're not learning to jump with two feet yet. They're doing more of the gallop motion. So we're learning to teach them the correct conditioning form of jumping with their two feet together. Um, the most common way that I've seen that taught in parent taught that I find the most successful is having them um, stand off something very slightly raised, never higher than their knees. Um, so I do like um, a panel mat unfolded or one of those little cartwheel blocks and they hold the parents hands and both of them bend their legs and they're going to be up in a rocket ship and they count down they go three two one and then they rocket ship and then they have to practice the safe landing too where they they um, freeze and stick it um, and so any any time that we're teaching those kids to bend and then try and straighten their legs to get that jumping motion um, is a great tool for teaching parent taught. Um, parent taught, obviously, we're also teaching roles and those roles teach conditioning in that they're strengthening their core. Um, log roles are fantastic for that age group because it's um, helping them develop that vestibular. And it also, fun fact, um, if you have a kid, class that's going wild and crazy, have them do lots of rolls or lots of turning, and it helps center them and get them focused. So if you have a class that's way off topic, have them stop for a second and everybody obviously in a safe spot, um, turn around five times, they'll be back focused on you and ready to get back to work afterwards. One of my fun classroom management tips. Um, we're teaching balance, Yes, we love spinning. <laughs> yes. Um, so balance for parent taught as well. We're teaching them to balance two feet together. One of my favorites is to have them stand on mushrooms because the mushroom is slightly curved and it does require some more balance than a typical floor. Um, but it's not like crazy dangerous because it's a little bit padded on the top. Um, 
And so then they sit down and slide off the other end for parent taught. Um, but that balance skill, balance is a conditioning skill and requires um, feet muscles that, um, that many of them haven't developed yet. And we kind of overlook in gymnastics and say, well, yeah, balancing because it's balance beam, but yes, it's also conditioning because some of these kids, I, I've had five-year-olds come to class that can't stand on one foot um, because they do not, it's not just not having the coordination, they do not have the strength skills to balance on the one foot. Sometimes they have issues with um, development of their feet um, or, issues with hearing and th those can cause issues too in sight but um often it's because they have not ever practiced balancing on one foot um and then that's zoe again um practicing that grip strength on her um okay so now we're going to kind of get into some bar stations and we're going to talk about um what kind of works i stole some of my team kids so obviously this is not a preschooler um, but it'll help us at least visually see the point. So um, again, we're we're kind of past parent talk, but I also do this in my parent talk class. But um, for preschool, I really want to focus. One of the things that really gets overlooked, I think, is the front support position, and that can be a conditioning station every single time you go to bars. Um, with COVID, you can also look at each kid having their own bar if you are capable of doing that if you have the setup that you can do that and you don't ever have to um you could do a whole circuit with them staying on their one bar just doing front support positions um i do not have the powerpoints available but i will have the presentation available so you can fast forward and screenshot as needed if you need to do that um, or you can email me and I may be able to share it, but I, there's no guarantees on that one because I'm not always the most technical, technologically advanced, but um, I will, um, this will be available, this is being recorded and so it will be um, available in that sense. Um, so if each kid has their own bar, they're all in front support, you could count to 10, or whatever you have a magic number and have them all agree on a magic number all together and you can practice counting together to that magic number you can do front support holds you can do front support shoulder shrugs okay you can do front support push as high as you can i had one like three-year-old who could like push down past her knees obviously i'm standing there for that case um or i have matt's waist stacked up underneath um in case she tips over but um that's one of my favorite stations. You can, in the front support position, have them scoot from side to the other side of the bar. Scoot, scoot, scoot. Um, toe taps. So they're in their front support and they lift their foot up and tap the bar. Introduction to leg cuts. Not that those are going to be in the routines anymore, I don't think, for 20, for next year. But um, for this year, still they are. Um, toe chaps are one of my favorites. Push, um, touch your belly button to the bar, initial dip, and then push yourself back up. Um, there are so, so many things that you can do just in front support. And if you need more ideas, I, I'm going to plug my preschool gymnastics coach again. Um, so preschool gymnastics coaches on Facebook is an excellent resource. I just I do it for fun. I'm me and Thomas. Hey, Thomas. Um, kind of monitor the site, but for the most part, people are so awesome about sharing and spreading ideas and asking questions. Um, I just love how supportive it is. So if you ever have questions and you're like, I need more ideas of things I can do in front support, people will start listing them off for you. It's an awesome resource. Okay, so that's the front support position. Oh man, I gotta go a little faster. Oh, fun graphics. Okay, um, so now we're going to talk about P bars. So um, again, these are all conditioning stations where you're building core strength, you're building grip strength, you're building um, arm strength, all of these things. Um, the crab position is an obvious one. Um, 
I do that even with my three-year-olds. They do the crab position. Sometimes with my parent and taught, I'll go um, with bear walks instead, working on that grip strength. Uh, but for the three, four, five-year-old, they're doing tabletops and crab walks. Um, sometimes I'll have them, this is tricky for them, but it's working coordination as well. Um, but balance something on their tummy while they do the crab walk that's really hard for them. So if you have that more advanced kid in class, maybe you have them grab a bean bag and, and do it with the bean bag across. Um, you can do position static holds. You can do tucks, pikes, straddles. Um, those are wonderful. And, and if that's one of my stations, I'm not just telling them to do a tuck hold. Um, I'm telling them to do a tuck hold and count to five if you're five years old. I'm telling them, and then, and then I tell them, oh, you did that so good counting to five. Can you count to seven? Are you as strong as a seven-year-old? And then they count as high as they can, and they think they're so cool by accomplishing and beating as strong as these older kids. Um, but there's, there's, you can use a prop. You can put something on their knees. You can put something in between their knees. You can um, have them, you can put a prop on the floor underneath her and have her um, hold it over the prop and then farther down have another prop and have them hold it again over the next prop. Um, different ways to make things fun while still working those strength positions. Um, okay, then we've got other under the bar skills. And when we're creating stations and coming up with these things to work through the bar conditioning, we want to also find ways to make them harder or easier. So if we're looking at this station, um, we'll call this gymnast Megan. That's not her name, but Megan. Um, if we're looking at Megan, how do we make that station that she's doing right now easier for a brand new three-year-old who has never done this before? How do we help her to do this station? Tap a cone in front. So put a cone in front that she has to tap her feet to. Awesome. Put a wedge mat under her bottom. Yeah, so that the big end is up this way and then it's easier for her to get her feet up. Yes, put bells on the bar. Tap her toes to the bells. Awesome. Put a block down so that they can kick up easier from the block. Yes. Hang balloons, tap toes to the balloons. You guys, it's like you guys have done this before. They am back and do it with a long PVC pipe. Love that. Yeah, break it down even farther and have them just do it on the floor with a PVC pipe. Bend knees. Yes. Awesome. Um, so then how do we make it harder? So I have a kid in class who can already do this, right? And so again, this is a three-year-old class. Maybe her older kid, older sibling is on team or maybe she's just athletically inclined. How do we make it harder? harder for horror even though she can already do it do it with your feet free so do it in more of a stalder position yeah hold it a longer time yes chin up to the bar in the same position Ooh, that sounds hard <laughs> I don't think I could do that um multiple times coming up and down without touching the floor yeah make them legless lift and lower yes 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 um yeah, and so for each of these stations, we want to be able to adapt them according to the kid's ability. Have a mat under her and have her do sit-ups. Oh, like rock, rock back and forth with a smaller straddle. Yeah. Oh, with a smaller straddle, this is the chin-up, got it. Um, you start to do things like the hold, right? To make it harder. Um, or you start to rock them and start getting them used to a shooting star position. Maybe put a mat under them to shoot them out and land on their back. Um, but for the conditioning station, we're looking more at a, at a stalled or a toes to bar hang, I feel like. Um, and those kinds of things, again, how long can you hold it? Can you hold it this long? Are you as strong as blah, blah, blah? 
I think the Incredible Hulk could hold it for 10 seconds. Do you think you're as strong as the Hulk? I don't know. Whatever. Make up whatever you can. <laughs> um, so with that, adding creativity and themes makes it funner for the kid. Bringing enthusiasm even to the conditioning stations and giving them feedback, not just telling them to go do the chin, chin hold forever. Um, they're going to get bored. They're going to become runners. They're going to um, not want to be on the station for for that long if they're not being challenged, if they think it's too hard, and if they're not getting feedback. Um, and then bringing in props, obviously, is, is helpful. Sorry, there's a question. Let's see. Oh, I can't pull it up. Let's see if I can. Let's see. Nope. Nope, nope. I'll have to get to the question at the end. Sorry. Ah! It's being crazy. What is going on? Ah, there we go. Okay, we're back. <laughs> Again, technology, not always my friend. Um, okay, so for example, so let's look at um, my friend here with the stairs. Um, we'll call her Sarah. Um, on this station, we're doing chin up, building those arm muscles and toes walking up, obviously building that pullover form. Um, and so while we are building those pullover muscles, we are teaching her fun ways to do it. So for example, let's say we're going on a picnic today. What's your favorite food that you want to have on a picnic? Do you want and then, and then we wait for them to answer, obviously, like a sandwich or cookies or whatever it may be. Okay, I want you to walk your feet up to the picnic and I want you to pull your chin up over and take 10 big bites of the cookie. Hum, 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 before you come down. Um, and then you could do that for like all kinds of things. Or you could do something as simple as chin up over the bar, walk your toes out. And then maybe you put a stamp on their feet or little stickers on their toes and you have them lift, lift their toe up in the air and say hello to their toes over the bar. Say hi toes. Um, those are wonderful. Um, then we look at my friend um, Megan over here on the, <laughs> on the rings, right? Holding herself up. Obviously again, chin up strength, tuck position make it harder in a pike, make it harder in a V. Um, but whatever your kid's level is, obviously we're still doing the chin position. And so we want to look at creative ways to use the rings. So maybe they're putting Minnie Mouse ears on. Maybe they're putting on some earrings. Maybe they're using them as binoculars to look at the zoo and what kind of animals they can see. Um, it just depends on what kind of theme or, or creativity you wanna tie into your lessons that day. Um, and what your plan is. And so maybe every week you're working in some kind of ring strength station, um, but every week it's, it's different because you're tying in, it's totally different to the kid depending on what you're having them do. So if they're looking through for binoculars, they don't associate that with the Mickey ears. Um, so using a different prop or even theme can totally change it up for them even though um, technically it's really working the same things. Um, so now let's talk about some simple bar props that you can use um, and some of my favorite kind of go-to's at the last minute. So obviously a cone is one of the easiest and will be one of the easiest ones for you to use in COVID, post-COVID world because it's very easy to clean. Um, so holding shapes over the cone, um, swinging and kicking over the cone is, is one of the more popular ones that my kids love. Um, one of my favorites for like, occasionally I get this class, like a whole class of like, just like super studs, right? And so um, one of my absolute favorites is taking a cone and then taking the ball, uh, like a little plastic ball and putting it on top of the cone and the kid has to straddle and scissor and grab the ball and lift it up. And then they have to try and put the ball back on the cone. Very few kids can do the putting it back on. And I explain that it's so tricky and we're just trying and it's just for fun. Um, 
but occasionally a kid can get it and it's it's really fun to see. Um, okay, so then you have something like a larger cone. Um, one of my favorite ways to introduce leg lifts are with this cone. They'll start by doing scissor kicks up and over, so one leg at a time going up and over the cone. And then as they get stronger, I have them try and do it with their feet together or with a shape between their legs or a bean bag. Um, you can also put like, um, I don't know if you guys know those like squeaker things. They're like little circular um, dots that squeak when you put your feet on them. And so they squeak one side and lift it over and squeak the other side. They love that, but it's basically a leg lift basically a leg lift working that down. And to make it even easier, you can lower the bar. Um, so then she's doing it on her booty, just lifting her feet up and over. Um, and you can always make it harder. Um, okay, onwards, what time is it? Ooh, I gotta hurry. Okay, parallettes. Um, oh, I skipped, I skipped one, okay. Parallettes. So you make these things easier by obviously doing one foot at a time and then slowly getting to building two feet. Make it harder, make it an L, make it a V. Um, straddle hold. Um, occasionally I'll have somebody try and I'll try and stall their room a little bit. Um, this is one of my absolute favorites that I like and never see anywhere. I don't know why people don't use this, but it's wonderful for teaching handstand and casting shape um and muscles in the shoulders um so they're in a push-up position their feet are up on the uh upside down rainbow and they're rocking the rainbow from side to side so they're building those core muscles while also holding that shape and obviously sometimes they sag or start to do things and this is where you need to make sure that you're giving feedback um and teaching those correct shaping as they're learning even in the preschool levels we need to make sure that we're we're staying on top of kids and making sure you teach them correct shapes and correct gymnastics. Um, quick bar stations that are quick, quick grab, easy um, preschool stations. So rope, obviously most kids at three years old will not be able to hang like, like a sloth on the hope, koala hang, that's what we call it, a koala hang. Um, but some of them are, have them try koala hangs. Have them try holding on and jumping their feet up. Jump, jump, jump. Then they're getting that grip strength and they're slowly learning to hold onto the rope and building that strength. Um, I love acro blocks. They're a great tool for straddle holds and they're a great side station. Um, yes, they, they're such an easy go-to um, station and the kids love them and they're safe. Like they're not, um like going on the bars necessarily because they're nice and low to the ground and um ours in particular are padded and so their their kids aren't going to get hurt trying to hold a straddle on them um obviously we'll kind of go quickly through the partner stations because post covid we're not going to be able to do much partner station um things where they're facing each other or working together they really enjoy to do um on this station with Megan, I think is the name I gave her. She is trying to build a tower with her feet or trying to pass the block back and forth to her partner. Um, so obviously keeping the kid engaged and having fun while they are conditioning. Um, so, and then one of my other favorites, so now we're gonna kind of go to some of the other events. This is one of my favorite um, like transitional activities if I have a lot of, um, extra time or the kids are being crazy sliders are wonderful and if you don't have a slider you can use a frisbee upside down you can even use like a paper plate paper plates were great um so you there's all sorts of ways you can have the kids most often i just have the kids chase me um because it's the easiest way to kind of keep them contained <laughs> so their hands will go on one slider both hands on one slider and they're crawling slash running trying to catch me um hands on two sliders works a whole different set of muscles feet on one slider feet on two sliders so hands on the floor feet on one slider 
hands on the floor, feet on two sliders, or standing up, feet on two sliders. Your bum can go on the slider. You can have them go forwards, you can have them go backwards, you can have them use their feet, you can have them use your hands. All kinds of options. Knees on the sliders, hands on the floor. Um, tummy on sliders. That one's a little bit trickier, but it actually works with preschool. It doesn't work for much older kids, but the preschoolers can, can kind of arch and just their tummy can go on the slider and it's really cute to see them be little penguins. Um, okay, some balance beam kind of side stations that we can do. So with this, I want to kind of reiterate um, a lot of conditioning and stations that you do in your gym are kind of set by the whole culture of the gym. And then within the culture of the gym, you want to have a culture in, within your class, each class, of that excellent, correct gymnastics. So even with my parent-taught classes, I'm teaching them, this is what it should look like. Um, and then after we're going through the circuit, maybe I'm going around and I'm helping fix the kid into the correct shape and be like, this is kind of what we're looking for. So we want to try and get them in this shape when we're doing this. Um, and so when I'm teaching my classes or when I'm training my coaches, I tell them we're looking for shoulders over the hands. We're looking for booty down. We're looking for that cat back. We're looking for head neutral. We're looking or looking at your toes, depending on what you're looking for. Um, but we're going through all of these specific things. We're also using cues to help them to try and get the correct shaping. So I'm saying hands go on the letters and then we're trying to get the feet on the zipper is the goal. Obviously she's older than a typical preschool kid, but um, the typical preschool kid, that's what I'm trying to do. Toes on the zipper, hands on the letters um, for this station. And we're teaching that correct handstand shape, but we're also conditioning, conditioning that handstand shape. Um, with a push-up position, obviously she does not have the cat back, but, um, we want to teach things like, and you can coordinate these things into your lesson plans too, inchworms or um, my, my more advanced preschool class, I'll have them try and jump their feet in and then hop their hands out. So inchworm it, but do it with a hop instead to get them more comfortable on the balance beam. And obviously we're keeping them on the low beams for, for preschool. Um, sometimes, we get to balance beam as a preschool coach and our entire setup is changed. And so we need a few minutes to get things set up. And so I will set out targets or dots on the balance beam and each kid standing on a target and then they sit on the balance beam and they all have to push their booty up. And then we're gonna try as a whole class to count to five. You guys are so strong. You made it past five seconds. Um, I think you guys are even stronger than that. Do you guys think you could do seven seconds? Um, and then they try and do that. We try and do straddle holds. We try and do um, these things. And so while they're holding it and while they are working as a class together to count to five, I'm rushing around like a mad person trying to set up everything for my preschool circuit. <laughs> um, and so having these things in your back pocket as a tool help the kids to progress um, while, um, while you're getting things set up. Um, with this, I'm also, while I'm setting things up, my face is still, I'm still facing them while I'm trying to set up like crazy. And I'm saying, hey, Megan, make sure your toes are pointed. Can you get your legs together, Susie? What about blah, 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 blah. So I'm, I'm still interacting with them while, while we're working too. Preschool coaching is a hard job, man, but only the best do it. Um, we are teaching them correct um, positions and um, terminology as we coach them. So maybe I introduce it with my theme of going to the zoo as a flamingo hold. But then when I'm making corrections and talking to them about it, it's a passe. Um, and so you, these dome things are awesome. Um, when they're first learning, we have them upside down. And then for the challenge, we flip them over so that it's a challenge for them to balance as they get older. 
Um, you can do it with feet together, you can do it on one foot in coupe, you can do it on one foot in passe, you can do it in arabesque. There are so many options to build, again, those balancing muscles that a lot of people are missing. And sometimes I get like level twos and level threes who can't stay on the beam. And typically it's because they don't have those muscles that they should have been building in their preschool program. Um, oh man, I am running out of time. It's okay. Um, okay, it's fine. We'll keep going. So for balance beam, we're looking at a couple different things that can also um, build their muscles. So the sloth hang is one of my favorite go-to ending activities. Um, I do not because I only have them. So let me go back to the domes real fast. So I only have them on the upside down dome until I'm confident with their balancing abilities. So I never flip it. I never flip it the other way. So the right picture, I never flip it that way until I know that they have some balancing skill. <laughs> so they've been in my class for a few weeks and I know they need the challenge. Um, and I've, I've, I've never had an issue with a kid hurting their foot. That's not to say it doesn't happen, um, but I personally have never had an issue. Um, Okay, so the sloth hang is one of my favorites. And um, for the challenge, I have them try and walk on the beam in the sloth position, or I have them try and pull themselves up and do little chin-ups head to each side of the beam. Um, and then creating levels is building that pistol squat or single leg squats that people so often do. Um, Chelsea Memo likes to do them on the high bar, it's fine. My preschoolers do it on the low beam. Um, and so you can do things where they're reaching their foot down and touching a squeaky thing or touching a cone or touching whatever it may be and then coming back up. That's building those muscles and balancing. Um, okay, vault. Um, we're gonna talk about what to do in a small space. So my preschool area is basically that colored square it's changed a lot our, our gym changes all the time we change the setup all the time um because we move equipment around and get new things and anyways um but this is typically how much space i have for a preschool class um which is not a whole lot and so this is one of my favorite tools grabbing something super simple whether it be a crayon beam or you can use those little um, cart row blocks or you can use panel mats or whatever and doing some small place um, plyometrics with them. Uh, you'd be surprised what preschoolers like to try to do as far as plyometrics. We do leg switches where one foot's on the beam and one foot's down and they switch their legs. That's hard for them. Um, we do ones where they jump up and jump down. We have ones where they jump up and jump down and then turn around and then jump up and jump down. Um, we have ones where they uh, put one foot on and then they try and turn and put the other foot on as they come down. That was a little bit more tricky and fun for them. We try jumping over. Um, we try standing on top and jumping as far as you can. Anything where we're trying to build those fast twitch muscles um, helps with vaulting even from the preschool level. Um, we also use agility ladders a lot, um, doing a lot of two feet jumps, one foot jumps, jump side to side. Um, they can also on the crayon beam jump side to side over the, or up on top and then over on the crayon beam too. It's great. Uh, but there's so many things you can do. And if you're ever like short of ideas, again, preschool gymnastics coaches is great, or you can just Google plyometric ideas. There are so many things to do with an agility ladder. Even like professional sports athletes use them and preschoolers can do most of the stuff that they, obviously it's not to the same level, but um, if you're looking for ideas to put in your repertoire, repertoire, <laughs> that'll work. Um, okay, and then, yeah, that's them. Okay, and then one of my absolute favorite tools are the little, Cartwheel red blocks, we use them, um, the original block. We use them for plyos. We use them getting a push-up position with your hands up on the block. 
walk your hands down and up to the side and up to the side and up and use obviously use carpets or something to signify where their hand should go or, or however you want to set it up but push up position is great um, we do push the block we flip them upside down so that they're not velcro stuck and they push the block down the floor and then they push it all the way black it's the original mat run you know um oh oh too far um lunge i have them put one foot up on the block and hold the lunge position a lot of them don't have those muscles to hold a lunge so if you're expecting them to do a handstand where they start in a lunge and finish in a lunge some of them don't even have the muscles to get back up into that lunge yet um we're trying to build those muscles um i'm trying to do this it's okay um these are some of my favorite ending activities or whole class tunnels so um wall sits work better for older kids so if they're all sitting in a wall sit and they're all five years old you can have one person crawl under the wall sit and then go to the other end and then they make a wall sit and then the next person goes um you can do it in a push-up position this person crawls under makes another push-up this person crawls under makes another push-up so on and so forth um you can do it with bridges um and oh i forgot to oh and you can do it with spider walks so Spider walks, sorry, I was like, what are spider walks? It took me a second. It's been a little while since I've been in the gym, obviously. Um, so their hands go on the floor and then their feet walk up the wall. And so they're at that, like an angled handstand and you can do a tunnel that way too. Um, okay, that is the last one. Oh my goodness. Okay, so now let's see if I can figure out how to do this. So I want to see I want to, how do I see the questions? It's okay, we're gonna figure this out. It's gonna be all right. Ha ha ha, I got it. Okay, what are the domes things called? I don't know. There are ones, I think we got ours from Wish, to be honest. Um, but they're, the ones that we have are actually spiky on the top but um, you can get them that, that aren't spiky too. And there's all kinds of different ones that you can get. There's bigger versions and there's like um, squishy versions too. They all work. Um, okay, finish that one. One leg at a time, scissors. Yeah, for um, back to that station. <laughs> yeah, hands on the bar and scissor legs. Love it, yes. Going back to grip strength, you mentioned about a parent pulling their child up with a bar. Do you worry about nursemaid's elbow? Um, so the problem, so huh, let me clear Thank you, Thomas. Let me clarify that. So when kids holding onto here, parents holding onto here and pulling them up, they're not pulling them up in the air. They're pulling them up to a stand. So they're never at any point just hanging from the lummy stick or the, um, they're never hanging from the lummy stick or whatever it is that you're using. Their, um, their feet are always on the ground. Uh, squeaky circles, I think, I wanna say Norbert's is where we got ours. Um, but I think most of the gymnastics companies sell them. Um, and I think Norbert's does, and I think um, like Flag House, if you're not familiar with Flag House, I think Flag House does too. Um, Sound Steps Flag House, yep, yep. <laughs> There's a few different options. Um, sorry, I get distracted. Okay, any other questions or anything? I know I kind of zoomed through that last bit, but I didn't realize that we were running low on time. We wanna try and keep these under like 50, 55 minutes so that, you can get ready for the next one. The next one should be great too. Cassie's wonderful. Um, hopefully you guys have had had a good time at these. I uh, um, hopefully <laughs> we'll be sending out an email tomorrow with um, with all the replays available and then we're also going to be asking for feedback so if there are certain lectures that you loved or certain ones that were like oh that wasn't what i was expecting or if there were ones that you wish you could have that we could have had um we can definitely look at that 
Um, anything? Okay, sorry, I gotta get caught up. Everybody's talking, okay. Yeah, and it shouldn't be a jerk up, correct, Gloria? It should be a smooth pull up, not a jerk. Um, anything for cartwheel conditioning, drills for preschool? Um, so a lot of cartwheel conditioning is just breaking down the skill. So we do a lot of lunge work, a lot of um, static position work. So laying down on their back and holding the, the tight arms by their ears and the straddle legs. Because um, if they can't be in that position on the ground, there's no way they're going to be able to do it upside down. Um, but breaking down the skills make a big difference. And then learning to kick back is a great one too. Um, I hope this is a new way to do Congress. I hope not. I, so I presented at regional and national Congress and I love, 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 love it. Um, Cause I like being able to stand up and interact and um, get actual feedback rather than just from a chat. <laughs> um, yeah, perfect. Thank you, Thomas. Um, Handstand walks, feet up on a mat, walk their feet up and down. We do a lot of um, feet up and over the rainbow. So their hands will go on the cartwheel block and they'll walk their feet up the rainbow and then over down the other side, just so that they're getting the motion. Um, yeah, there will all be posted afterwards. There's a couple of them that will be deleted after two weeks, um, just because they're, it's their prerogative. Um, I know some of the presenters sell their stuff and so, they just ask that we take them down after two weeks, which is totally fine. Um, do, oh, um, do you bridge before age five? So, fun story, if you haven't been to Congress recently, they've clarified that. Um, USA Gymnastics used to take a stand that absolutely no, no bridges before five. And um, they've come back and said, that that is not the case, that they recommend that developmentally that the child is ready to bridge, so ready to push up their own weight. Um, so obviously they don't want coaches yanking them up with their backs. Please don't ever do that. Um, but if the child is developmentally ready, there's nothing wrong with them doing it from what they understand from their studies. So that's what USA Gymnastics has come out and said. Will you have parent taught classes? I'm worried about starting this class up soon um i i parent taught is not as much of a concern for me tj than preschool because parent taught parents can touch their kids all they want and parents are in charge of keeping their kid in line and and making sure that they're not putting their hands in their mouth and all that kind of stuff with a preschool i have six preschool there's six three-year-olds it's going to be a nightmare trying to keep them apart, but also together because hurting cats. Hello. Um, we just don't assist in any way the bridge. Yeah. Yeah, I, I know that in the UK. It, yep, it happens. And some kids are developmentally ready to do the bridge. It's just um, not all of them are. And so we want to make sure that we're teaching correct, safe gymnastics and progressions. Um, and so we don't want anybody obviously getting hurt. And so, um, okay, so I am going to go ahead and uh, wrap this up. Thank you guys for attending and participating. Um, again, this will be posted later. And um, yeah, feel free to email me if you have any questions, preschool gymnastics coaching at gmail.com or look me up on Facebook. I'm happy to, to help as I can. Have a good rest of your day and don't forget to hop on to Cassie's in just a little while. Bye.